Hey, what's going on everybody? This is going to be my glitchless speedrun tutorial for Amnesia the Bunker. I just recently released an any percent tutorial as well, but that uses a lot of glitches to beat the game in under two minutes, and that's not everyone's style. And it was heavily requested I make one for glitchless, as that's kind of the most popular category at the moment. So we're going to go over how to get through this run. Uh, this does rely a lot on getting good RNG, getting good item spawns, and stuff like that. So we're going to go over good luck and also bad luck if you just get worst case scenario luck I will give you strats on how to deal with that and get through a run at that point you know you're not gonna get a good time and not get a good record uh, but if you just wanna have some fun with it learn things know some backup strats I've got the stuff for you there's also a lot in this run so bear with me it might be a little bit of a lengthy video and hopefully I don't forget anything um, so new game doesn't matter the save slot you can override it. You can play on any difficulty. Easy is the most recommended because the only real difference you're going to encounter on normal or hard is you're going to just have less item spawns in general, which means you have even lower chances of getting good RNG. We do rely on getting a couple grenades and fuel cans uh, early on. So the more spawns the, <laughs> that you have, the better it's going to be. Uh, but all the strats should work on normal or hard if that's your cup of tea. Anyways, we can go past the screen. I'd recommend turning video distortion effects off just because they can be very nauseating. Um, hints doesn't matter. If you have hints on, turn game pausing hints off because that's just going to waste time anytime they get on your screen. Uh, there is a brief moment where subtitles save a little bit of time, just a couple of frames. Not super important, but if you want the most optimal strats, turn subtitles on. Vibration, uh, it's up to you. Anyways, you can start. If you don't see skip intro, that means you haven't beaten the game one time through. So either you're going to have to go through the tutorial before you can start doing actual runs, or just go play the game casually, which I highly recommend doing. So a new game, yes. So time is going to start once the screen goes black again. It's going to have this little loading effect and then go black. And if you look in the bottom right, a little lantern will flicker. If you have live split set up, it will automatically start time for you. If you're running on console where you don't have live split or just don't really care to use it, um, that is your cue to start timing. So you'll see a little flicker in the bottom right, and we're good to go. From here, it's about 50 seconds until we gain control of our character and can actually do anything about the run. There's an argument to be made that uh, timing should start on gaining control, but we'd have to sit through this regardless, so ultimately it doesn't matter. As long as everybody starts time at the same spot, it's all good. So we just gotta wake up a little bit, then we can go over a couple things and get going. One brief thing that I didn't mention at the beginning, but if you go into your options and set up gamma, I would also highly recommend turning gamma all the way up. This game gets really hard to see at certain points, and we're going to be running around without the flashlight and in the dark quite a bit. So if you haven't already done that, uh, make sure you do that. Now as we're waking up, we're going to go for one small mechanic that uh, can play an important part later on in the run. But for the most part, it's kind of just a trivial thing. Uh, if, you, if you jump, you gain a decent amount of height. You know, it's pretty obvious you jump to go higher. If you jump from a crouched position, you'll actually gain a more height. Um, we were just hitting our heads already, but anytime you hear me say crouch jump, uh, a lot of people would think crouch jump is jumping and then crouching, like in a lot of Source games and a lot of other FPS games. Uh, when I say crouch jump, I mean crouch down and then jump up so you get more height. Um, so we're going to open the door. Don't let it hit you. You run off to the right, to the right again, and to the left. Uh, you can go around either way. I think technically to the right is a little bit faster to sneak your way through. Open this door and open this door to the pantry. A uh, little tip for moving this latch is don't just try to find the latch alone. It's kind of small. It's got a, not a great hitbox. Look more towards where the latch is connected to the box itself. Uh, all of this is what you can move. Make sure it go, goes all the way up. You don't want it there and dropping down. Can really cost you some time. Uh, you're always gonna have two bullets, pick those up, turn back and grab the pistol from this guy. Uh, if you want to save a little bit of time frame-wise, when you go to load the bullets, 
As soon as you start putting one bullet in, you see that animation? Uh, you can start sprinting again. You don't actually need to wait for the full animation to play through. Uh, the game will always try to load the max amount of ammo it can, depending on what you have. Uh, this is a really weird way to describe it. Uh, but you can't just load one bullet and then run off. So we put one bullet in, run away, and you can see in the bottom right that it still loaded the second bullet, but we were able to sprint while doing so. So that's a little bit of time save. Um, once again, if you're going for a really good time. So we're going to run up here. Do not miss this. We have two bullets, but we're going to use the other bullet for stuff later on. Um, so really make sure you hit this, whether you need to sit here and wait a second for the gun to stop moving and to stop swaying. Um, also don't stand too close because the door will just swing right open. You don't want to block its path. If you miss that shot, you honestly might need to just reset. Uh, because we're not going to go hunting for a pistol bullet. Um, right here, as you're running down the stairs, don't run over to this shelf. If it has a grenade, you might get a grenade spawn right here on this shelf. Um, if it's going to spawn anywhere, it's going to be right there. Just see if it's there so you can grab it on the way back up. Uh, just kind of run down, look at the left. If it's not there, keep on going. Uh, now, down here, there's always going to be a fuel can that we're going to pick up and the dog tag, which is the code for the door. Sometimes there will be two different uh, spawns for fuel cans in these locations. If you're going for the best time, I don't recommend picking up either of these. We do want one extra fuel can for strats in the prison, uh, but there are better options in the locker room. Uh, but if you're just getting into the run and you want to do the strats in the prison, and you see a fuel can over here, just run over, pick it up, and then run back over here. You only need one additional fuel can, so if you see two there, just pick one of them. Don't pick both. I run over here, pick this up, look at the code, it's going to be on the back side, 1683. Uh, I would rec recommend memorizing it if you can, uh, otherwise it's going to be in your notepad here. The codes later on you will have to memorize or write down as you're going, because we're not going to have them in the notepad, but uh, use one of the fuel cans. You should more than likely only have one here, but if you got a second one, uh, just save it for now, don't put it in the generator. Turn on the fuel. I run back up the stairs. So if you have a grenade over on the shelf, pick it up. Otherwise, just run around this way. And an interesting thing about these tumblers is while the code we got is randomized, it's always in the same location, but the code itself is random. These tumblers start on the same numbers. So if you want to get really sweaty with it and really push for the best times, if you know how these tumblers are set up, you can like preemptively know which way you need to go. So I know this first tumbler is always zero and my code starts with the one. So as, as I'm running up here, I don't even think about it. I just, as soon as I go in, I'm just gonna drop that down um, and do that. I honestly already forgot the code. 1683, hey, there we go. Close enough. Um, once that's in, click the button, step back, pull that open and click save. We are going to use save states to do some research missions. We're going to run off, get a code uh, and then load back this save. So we don't have to actually run all the way back. This is why they're not going to be on our inventory. This is also going to save us on uh, fuel for the generator, which is pretty nice. And when we go to the communications, we actually get to save a bullet as well. I know these strats aren't appealing to everybody. Um, there are some older runs that do not use this that are still about the 15 minute mark. Uh, I believe Kakery has probably the best one out there, maybe like 1440 if you're looking for one of those ones to get based off of. The strats for the most part aren't too different. Um, there's just some stuff with the generator and turning it on at a different point. Um, but this tutorial will go over the save strats. So once you've made a save, go out the door that we just opened, turn left. And this is where it gets a little dark. You're going to turn left again at the first entrance. You're going to run up three doors. Uh, the first two are going to be closed, the third one will always be open. And run in here. I would recommend, uh, this gas container is rarely here. It's like a 10% chance to spawn or something like that. Uh, it's very uncommon. Uh, if it's not here, you could just run around, but I would recommend crouch jumping on top of this barrel and then crouching again to actually get over it. Move the grate out of the way. Drop down here. It's a little bit weird to get in there. Um, now you can either break the boards, you can push into them. To grab the code or you can like lean into them uh, just do whatever you want get the code now this one is hard to read I know it's 9458 uh, but this is one that's not going to stay in our notebook so if you're curious on what it is you actually don't know what it says 
look at it real quick. So it is 9458 and you're going to load last save. This is going to be, take us back to that safe that we just made in the safe room. And because we did this, it is not going to be in our notepad. So if I don't remember that it's 9458 and I go to put it in and that's not the code, um, I'd have to run back and actually see what it is again. So once again, either just write it down, memorize it, or uh, uh, <laughs> I guess just reset. Uh, when you're coming in here on the shelf, not the one close, but the one far away, in the middle of the three, there's another grenade spawn that you can kind of keep an eye out for. Uh, there's two fuel cans down here that can spawn, uh, either one. This is where I would recommend picking up your extra fuel can. These are a little bit faster than the ones by the generator, because they're just right along the way. Come up to this code. So I know it's 9458, I went the wrong way. And now this will open on its own, so you can kind of sidestep and pick that up. You don't actually need to open it. So yeah, you can have a grenade spawn here, it's not. The shelf has two potential grenade spawns as well. And there's also a fuel can spawn right below. Uh, you don't want gas grenades. There's a lot of gas grenades that spawn here. Those do not work for our purposes. We need frag grenades. So if we don't have those, um, it's not going to work. So um, this is a pretty ideal setup in terms of RNG. Uh, one fuel can, one grenade. If you get two grenades, that is really good luck, and you don't need to look out for any more throughout the run. And so you can just blaze to the end. Um... If you don't have a fuel can at this point, that's okay. I'll show you the backup strat for prison. Don't look for fuel cans beyond this point. It's not going to be worthwhile. Uh, we don't need them for anything. Uh, grenades, I'll still tell you where to find some if you're below. If you haven't found a second one, if you haven't found a first one, uh, we'll go over all that. Uh, I like to bind this to two and three real quick. Uh, we're instantly going to pull out this wheel anyways, so just break this. Um... You don't need to do those binds. I don't know if they work on console. You can just open up your inventory and use it when it's needed. Um, so pay attention to this bar on the right. When you spin this and that gets to the very bottom, start running off. It will finish on its own. You don't need to actually spin the wheel the entire way. So now we're in the prison. Ultimately, we're going to do this exact same strat. It's just whether you have a fuel can or not. So if you have a fuel can, you want to come over to this window, open your inventory, and press X on it, so you drop it like this. Uh, if it falls over on its side, I don't know if I can even get that. Sometimes the crouch jump will still work. Uh, I can't even get it to fall. Yeah, so if it's on its side, sometimes you can still get up here, but it's, it's pretty tight and it's not super worthwhile. Uh, just drop it. Hopefully it lands. Jump on top of it. Oop. Crouch, jump, and you land up here. Uh, stand on top of this weird looking 6, this G, whatever you want to call it, this 9. Um, it's a pretty good indication on where to stand for hitting the second switch. You don't need to hit the first one, but sometimes it's a little tricky to hit the second without this one being out of the way already. So just hit that. Run up, uh, and if you're fast enough, you'll have to crouch under the grate to grab these. Uh, I'm going to reload and show you how to do it with the stool as well. Alright, so if you get to prison and you don't have a fuel can, or you just simply don't want to use that strat, that is perfectly fine. The backup is only just a couple seconds slower. There's only one thing you really need to watch out for, and that's uh, this door can have an X on it, which means it is trip wired up it has a trap behind it which is i think can only be an incendiary grenade and a frag grenade um the frag grenade will kill you if you try to run in and grab the stool and run out um so what you want to look out for is if that's x is there open the door if you see the incendiary start just run in grab the stool run out you'll take a tick of damage to the fire maybe even two which is a little slow but you'll live if you don't see that, then just open the door, back up, uh, and wait for the frag grenade to go off. But we don't have an X, so we can just open it. But yeah, if you open it, see the flare drop, just run in, grab this little stool, and hop out. If not, you know, obviously, 
wait for the frag grenade to go off and then you're good uh place is still out here you can just jump up here if it lands on its side somehow like that you will have to do a crouch jump to get up here but the same strat just stay on top of the weird 9g thing flip the switch and it's uh, crouch under here to grab here uh i tend if i'm fast enough to be still in a crouch state just go ahead and bind this to two once again it's not super needed um, you can just pull these out when you get to the arsenal tunnels. Um, now there is a very odd chance, depending on how you run through the game, that the monster can spawn here and run down the tunnels. Don't waste your bullet on it. Um, either just reload from that save that we made before, which is kind of far behind. You'll lose a good minute or so, or just restart the run entirely. Uh, but for the most part, he's not going to be here. And should be able to just run back out the way you came in. And we're going to be running right back to that save to make another one. Just running back out the way we came in. Click the lantern and run back out. Running back again the way we just came, but we're gonna turn left into the soldier quarters, the communications area, uh, down the stairs, and this is where the biggest factor of RNG comes into the run, the communications key. So there are two sides to the communications, the soldier quarters. There's the left side and the right side. Uh, the left side we need to go through anyways for the puzzle here using the light boxes. So good luck is having a spawn on this side. Um, we're going to run through that, and then we're going to go over the bad luck as well. I believe there are 18 total key spawns here, or 18 spots that the key can spawn in, I should say. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I know where all 18 of those are, so I'm going to point those out, even though if we get like a good key, we'll still go over all the bad luck and all that. Uh, there are a few really nasty ones, and it's also really hard to see the key a lot of times, especially if you're going fast. So if you run through the good side and you don't see it, and you run through the bad side and you still don't see it, just double check. Um, so sometimes you might you may just miss it because you're going too fast and it blends in. Uh, anyways, run up these little stairs, flip the switch. There can be a tripwire here, just jump over it if it is. Flip the second one. Um, this is the door that we need the key for. We're just going to turn to the left. Go up to the third bunk on the right. Check this tray, check under the hat, check under the pillow. If it's not in any of those, run over to this one. Check the tray. So we got a key here under these blankets. That's a good spawn for us. You can check under the pillow as well. Uh, the things like the pillow may be displaced if the key is under it. So it's like a kind of a visual cue you can look out for. If you run up here and you see that the pillow is like where it is now, the key is probably uh, right there. But those are all the spawns for this section. So run through the door. So we'll go over the bad luck spawns as well. Uh, jump over any trip wires you see. This is a little bit of a tricky jump. You want to hook left as soon as you jump over these rats and aim for the corner. Um, uh, you can't avoid damage entirely. It's just a little bit of a weird timing. Uh, I say hook left because there can be a trip wire here. It's kind of like a 50-50 spawn. Uh, and you don't want to activate that because you're going to be running back out this way too. So hook left and then if there's a trip wire, jump over it. Open the door. You can jump over the stool or just run around it. Um, use your shot there. Don't miss. Flip the switch and then back out the way we came. Jump over the tripwire. You can actually run through the tripwire if you're running back. It's kind of fine. Uh, get past the rats. Jump over any tripwires here. Uh, it looks like we're going to go over the bad luck spawn. But if you got good luck, all you need to do is run out here and use your key. And we're going to go up here and solve the puzzle in just a second. But if you got bad luck, then you're going to be coming over to the second room. Check this one on the left. Check this box. Check under these blankets. Check under this pillow. If it's not there, turn left. And go to the third bunk. Or second bunk on the right, I should say. Um, check under this pillow. Check the third bunk. Check this tray. Under the uh, blankets, under the pillow. There's a really nasty spawn right here on the side of the bed on this metal part. That's a really brutal one to get. It is really hard to see. Uh, and then the last one, you go down to the fifth one. Uh, check the metal tray. Check the blankets under the hat and under the pillow. Uh, that should be all the spawns. If there's one that I missed, I'm sorry. 
I've never seen any besides those. Um, but like I said, if, if you missed it, just go back through all the spawns and you should find it. If not, uh, you've kind of wasted time and you could probably just reset. The terrible mindset to have, but that's that's my speedrunner brain. So here is where subtitles can kind of save you a little bit of time. We're going to play this message on the radio and he's going to start talking and the subtitles update a little bit faster than he can verbally say the codes and we only want three digits here the code is four but if we have the first three uh, we can leave and we can brute force the fourth so we're going to let him say two out loud and then once the third subtitle pops up that's going to be our last digit we want we just hit escape and we're going to be loading our last save so we're loading a save here Everything we do in communications really doesn't matter. So if you find a grenade down here or you're looking for one, we're going to lose it by loading this save. It's not very important. Uh, same for pistol ammo or healing or if you've taken damage. None of that stuff's going to matter as long as we get the code. So we were actually a little bit too slow because I went through all the, all the spawns. So I'm going to run back through this real quick and I will be right back with you. All right. This time I've gotten here a little bit faster. So if you were in that same situation, you took too long finding the key, uh, what you can do is just load last save, run back down here. That key is always going to spawn in the same place per that save file, so you should be able to find it a little bit faster, and you should be able to continue. Anyways, we're going to let this guy play his message. So we can see it's 6 before he's even said it, so at 796, I'm going to load last save. Uh, this is where I would highly recommend writing this down. Because um, it's going to be a while before we actually get to putting in this arsenal code. And if you're just trying to memorize it, keep it in your head, uh, you may forget it by the time we actually get there. Uh, I like to write it down in my Twitch chat when I'm streaming. Um, but if you have pen and paper, that works too, whatever it may be. Uh, so my code is 796. And there is a fourth digit once again, but we're going to brute force that. And I'll show you how once we get there. So anyways, we're just going to continue from here. Should be back out in the hallway. You might end up here if you haven't, like, once you save, um, there's a little bit of time before it actually makes the save. So, um, depending on how fast you get out, you might be in different stages here. But, anyways, run off to the left. If you still haven't gotten a grenade or you haven't found your second one, there's a spawn right here. And pick one up. It's not consistent. That is also RNG. Um, but it's a pretty decent one to get along the way. So, we're going to run into the tunnels. Crouch under here. Um, so I have the bolt cutters bound, so I'm just going to hit my hotkey and bring them out. Otherwise, you can just open your inventory and use them from there. Perfectly fine. Just snap the chain off. Pop this through. Now, there is a little bit of parkour uh, if you want to go for a really good time. This is not necessary. You can just move a box and go through the water. Moving in water is slower, which is why we like to do this jump. Uh, but it is a little bit tricky. So you want to jump over to this barrel. Uh, you can also land like kind of on the wood. But from the barrel you want to jump towards the shelving. I find jumping more towards the left works out better. Uh, don't fall off, but pull the switch. Hop back. Hop over to the stairs and pull the lever. Uh, we also need to go back again. So you're going to have to get really good at this. And from here you're good. Um, but if you don't want to do this jumping... All you need to do is go through the water uh, and move this box out of the way. Just pull it to the right, crouch underneath, pull the lever, come back, pull that switch, get the engine going, and then run back through here. Now I'm going to move this back in place because there's a little bit of movement tech I want to show off with this potentially when you come back, but um, we'll get into that. So run through here, break the board, just push it, throw it out of the way. Uh, you don't need to move this all the way with you. Uh, one thing I would highly suggest here is if you still have the bolt cutters out, swap to your pistol or just put them away. Uh, do not swap to something like the grenade because you're going to be doing a left click, right click, left click, right click. So you can grab the box and then throw it. So it goes a little bit further and it's a little bit faster. Uh, having something like a grenade or the bolt cutters out, it'll go through like a little animation if you try to do that fast. Uh, something like the gun or just your bare fist works better. So if I bring this out you can kind of see it like tries to do this weird animation um just push this off to the right ideally you're supposed to put it in this little alcove but uh, as long as you have enough room once you get past this wooden beam uh, it's a good marker as long as you have enough room here you're good to just run past it 
Now, if you already have your, your nades, uh, or even if you have one nade, I would highly suggest uh, going up here on the right and jumping over this stuff and continuing. If you're still new to the run, you can run up here and grab this save so you can practice the grenade throws. And if you don't have a grenade at all, uh, there is a little box over here that can have a grenade in it once again. You can pick that up. Just going to save real quick. Uh, this grenade throw is tricky. The grenade throws in this game are not super great to do when you're moving. So I'd suggest running up to this wooden beam, the last one. Uh, this is where you should start pulling your pen for the grenade. And then you want to walk a little forward right about here, like as far left as you can. And aim towards the left side of this door. That way you don't hit any of this rock. Uh, and you're going to get it like right next to it. So just chuck it down there. So it actually blasted off the side. Not super great. Uh, and even this may have worked for me. Um, because we're going to be blowing up this door. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, you just really cannot get this for the life of you. You can run down, which we're going to do because we're going to have to go get that detonator handle. Um, and just blow it up right in front of it. Now I got lucky and it did break, so I'm just going to continue. But if you want to practice it, you know, just make that save. Run up here, chuck a grenade, see if it blows up. If not, you know, reload. Uh, either way... Just keep continuing. Also, if you don't have any nades up to this point, there are two more spawns down here that I know of where you can get one to blow up the store. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to result on finding a brick. And there should always be a brick spawn down here. I just don't actually know where all the spawns are. So if that happens, um, you're just going to have to kind of look around. So there's another nade on this shelf. Just want to go through this door. And run up. So if it's blown open, you can just run through here. If you still don't have a nade and there's not one on that shelf, just to the side of this door, there's a grenade spawn on top of this bottom box right here. Um, that's kind of your last shot at getting a grenade. But you grab the detonator handle and continue on. Like I said, there should be a brick down here, one of the big bricks that you can throw at the door to break it. But uh, like I said, it's, it's really hard to see, and I don't know where all the spawns are. That's the one part of RNG that I do not have covered. Uh, obviously, this part's going to be inaccessible. Uh, I guess you could try to kill the guy somehow, and then take a shotgun for this. Uh, on the way out, you want to grab up this box. If this box is in here for some reason, it got like, blown up by a nade. Uh, this is the exact same box, it's just on the side, so you grab either two of these. And you're going to be running out the way you came in. It's a little dis uh, disorientating, but... Um, just find your way back out here. You can throw this on the side. Sometimes this box won't let you jump up on it like this. Uh, you can just do a crouch jump. Jump up on top of this box. Also, if this is on its side, you're probably going to have to do a crouch jump to get up on here. And just jump back on top. There's a weird strat you can do with crouch jumping on um, this slope surface. It's not super great. I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you're going for like a really good time. Even then, that setup's pretty much just as fast and more consistent, so that's what I would recommend. Anyways, we're running back out. Um, if you have only found one grenade so far and you didn't check the spawn out here, I would recommend checking that now. There's really no more chances to check for grenades, and you would really prefer to have one for Arsenal as well. Ideally, you have two grenades in this run. One for that window throw, um, and if not there, for breaking the door. And then one more for Arsenal. But you can get through Arsenal without it. I'll show you how. I'm going to make a save real quick, just so I can run through there. Uh, now, the only real time you should encounter the monster, or have the potential to, outside of one brief section in prison, is the Arsenal. Um, you really shouldn't see him, and if he does show up, he might just break some stuff for you and hit a trap and then disappear. But, uh, I have had some runs die going that way. Uh, so if this box hasn't been moved at all when you've run through, you can jump up on top of it. I like to do a crouch jump, uh, and you want to jump over to the shelving. But if it's moved, that's not going to be possible. Sometimes it'll be, like, a little bit further out here, and you just can't do it. Uh, if you've done the parkour and you didn't move this, you can crouch jump off of this up here. That works just fine. Um, obviously, if this box is moved, or you don't want to do any of those, you can just move the box out of the way and run back out here. And crouch through. 
Now there's two trip wires you can encounter. There's one here. Uh, the next one is really deadly if you hit it, because there will always be this explosive barrel if there is a trip wire here. This is not a guaranteed spawn, but if there is a trip wire, I'm pretty sure this is a hard spawn. So if you hit that, try to put in your code, it'll blow up and kill you. So I would recommend, as you're coming around this last corner, just to jump right away, and that should get you over it. It's kind of like, come around, jump, and you should be just fine. Uh, anyways, this is where we use that arsenal code that we got down in communication. So mine was 796. Those are the three digits I got. Um, now, I never got the fourth digit, so I'm just going to start spinning. I, I prefer to go down. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be random anyways, but uh, eventually you should click and open. From here, if you have a grenade, the way you want to use it is you're going to run up to this first shelving and then just chuck it at the next set. Uh, make sure it doesn't hit the shelving you're looking at. Just kind of throw it towards the bottom. Um, you want to run around to the left. So this part is really dark and really spooky. Uh, if you go really fast, you get really good times. You can get through the tunnels very cleanly. Uh, sometimes the generator lights will still be on, and you can actually see quite a bit here. But move these things out of the way. Uh, run to the right where you blew up those shelvings with the grenade. Prefer to go on the right side of these two. There's going to be an explosive barrel underneath this bookcase. This is a hard spawn, meaning it will always be there. This is what we're going to use our pistol shot on to blow up. You can run through, uh, run to the right past these two barrels. Hook a left, hook another left, and you want to remove the top two boards. You can just jump over this bottom one. Jump on top of this table, so you can hop over these shelvings. Uh, there is a tripwire here a lot of the times, just hop over that if you can. It's a pretty hard one to avoid, but you definitely want to. Um, and now you're at the TNT. So, um, while I'm picking this up, because I've kind of stopped for a moment, I like to also come in here and quickly bind these back to two and three. Uh, once again, you don't have to bind this, it's not super necessary, but you can save a little bit of time later on. So now I was basically going to run out the exact way we came in, hook a right out the door, jump up on top of this barrel, or not this barrel, but this box, on the shelving, over this, I was unfortunately too slow as I was running through hitting spling stuff and the monster got me. Um, but you're just going to run out the exact way you came in. The stuff's blown up so you can run straight back out. Now I'm going to show you how to do this without a grenade since he's killed me anyways. Alright, I've gone back over here. If you don't have any grenades, just huck a left. Move this stuff out of the way. Uh, run to the right. You're going to open up this metal gate. Just push it open. Run to the left. Gonna crouch down and move this box out of the way. Right, and as soon as you hook a left, this is basically where you blow up the barrel, so run forward, blow it open, and you've effectively caught back up to where the rest of the route is. Let's move these off the wall. Let's jump over stuff. not confident about getting out you can light this which I believe is a save on easy I uh, don't worry if there's gas traps just run past it um, back out. I think the monster is still lurking. Sometimes he hits traps. He hit some gas traps, so he may not be there. We'll see. Like, if there's a gas trap down or an incendiary or something, you know, don't worry about running through it. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, sounds like the monster's actually there, so I'm gonna let him take some damage. And he should run off. Um, anyways, just run through this. Run back out. If the monster spawned, he may have destroyed some stuff like this. Uh, those are the shelves you blow up with the grenade anyways. Uh, sometimes he'll break these and you can just run out. Um, either way, just, if that's not broken, he didn't spawn at all. You just have to run back around the other way, the way that you came in. And we're going back to the safe room. This is, usually at this point, the game is very dark. Even if you're fast, the generator will run out before you get to the explosives. 
Uh, so the return trip is very, very dark. It is hard to see for sure. Uh, it's just something you got to kind of memorize the map layout and get good at navigating it um, from there. So we are almost done with the run. I've gotten through all of the RNG stuff. Now, if you've bound your stuff uh, in the menu, you can just go ahead and pull them out. Otherwise, open up your menu, click the things, put them in. Uh, the order does not matter. I like to do that one first. Put in the TNT. And run back and just click on the detonator. Alright, so for the end, you want to grab this box before you crouch through this hole. And if you have your rotate, rotate key set up, uh, so mine is bound to R and K, which is the mouse button for me. I believe by default these are T. As you're running through, what you can do is use rotate, hold it down, move the box so it's standing up like this. This is the most ideal situation. You don't want to stop and do it, but as you're running, you can just move it around. Um, if you don't have rotate set up or don't want to do that, uh, you can just like let it fall on the floor and then pick it up. Um, once we get to the end, the monster will spawn, so there's a limited amount of time. If the box is straight up, you don't have to do a crouch jump for what we're going to do at the end. It's kind of like in leaving the tunnels. If the box is straight up, you can just do jumps to get over. Otherwise, if it's on its side or something, you have to land on it and then crouch jump. Um, so, like I said, this is ideal. The bridges are randomized, so this bridge got broken. Sometimes it'll be a, like, stone bridge and it'll be up, which is very unfortunate. But, uh, you know, if it's, if it's broken all the way or it's a stone bridge and it's up, you can just run down one of the other sides. Do that. Uh, now, if you're not fast enough, the monster will spawn and kill you. You can also just, like, start this and then... Um, run off and fix it. But if you're still holding this box, what you can do is continue to hold this and use it to push this bigger box at a faster rate. So just hold on to it and uh, push this box on the right side and then move it left. So we can just do this. Um, so this fell over. If you do a crouch jump, aim for the very middle of this box. The sides do not work for crouch jumping. It's a little too high. So you can crouch jump right in the middle um, and just hop over this. Hop over the wall, and you're basically home free. All you need to do is run up here and push the rocks. I would recommend pushing the bottom rock. Uh, the top rock can work, but sometimes they separate and you have to push the bottom anyway, so just kind of push there. And if you have life split set up, it will automatically end time for you, but uh, as soon as the rocks start falling away and you lose control of your character, that is where time stops. Congratulations, you've beaten the game glitchless. You've done it. Um, if you've actually done a run and time it, let me know down in the comments what time you got. And if you have any questions about how to get through this run, maybe I forgot to cover something and you still have questions about it, leave the, those down there as well. I will do my best to answer all of those and help out in any way that I can. If you want to see a run of this done very, very quickly, I just set the record moments before recording this tutorial at 1019. You can go check that out on YouTube as well. Well, thank you for watching, said. Leave those comments down below and I'll get to them. Good luck.